Hello everyone, long time no see. Welcome to another video. I have been on vacation in Beijing for a few weeks. I just came back home a few days ago and I bought a massive amount of books and art supplies. In this video, I will take you with me on my trip from Sweden to where I grew up and we're also gonna do some unpacking, unboxing together. I haven't been back home to meet my family for about four years now because of the pandemic. My mom bought the business class ticket for me as a special treat, which is so nice of her. My family used to work at the airport, so they get to buy tickets at a fraction of the original price, but still, I've never had this level of luxury before. After landing, I couldn't film very much because the border control doesn't allow photography and I had too much things to carry anyway. But it was so nice to finally meet my family after such a long time. The second day, we went to a restaurant that I really liked and we had some really great food there. We took a day trip to pay our respects at our family grave and we walked around in the area where both me and my mom grew up as kids. This is such a nostalgic feeling. We walked through the neighborhood where my mom grew up and visited the little bookstore where I used to buy all my Harry Potter books. It did not used to look so political, I promise but it still feels and smells the same here. It's just that everything is so much smaller as I remembered. This is the kindergarten I used to go to. My mom told me that I fell down one of those spiral staircases when I was four and scraped my face very badly and didn't even cry. But I don't remember anything like that. We went to get one of my old favorite street food. It's quite amazing that after so many years, it still tastes the same. We went back to check our old apartment. So much things have changed, but somehow it still feels the same. We used to live very close to the airport and I almost forgot how much I love to look at and listen to the airplanes. My grandparents' place was also in this area, but it was turned into a small business where people can buy lottery tickets. I didn't really want to go see it because I don't want the sight of that to overwrite my memory of that place. So we went home. The next day, I went to a bakery to have another childhood favorite just to realize that I don't like it anymore. I also had lunch with my dad, it was a lot of catching up to do, and after that, I hid away in a bookstore for a few hours. I went to a Buddha temple with a friend, thinking to do some sketching there, but it was so crowded that I didn't feel like doing it, so we went to a cafe instead. Yeah. 
The other day, I took the subway to meet up with another friend. We went to a bookstore to look at the art sections. Books here are so cheap, and I bought a huge stack with me. And of course, I had to visit the local art supply store. It didn't look much from the outside, but it was massive inside. The entire first floor is for materials for traditional East Asian arts. I discovered so many things that I never knew before. I got a few brushes because I forgot all my watercolor brushes at home. In the basement, I found many familiar brands and a huge range of all types of art-related stuff. I definitely didn't plan enough time to explore here because it looks like it's gonna take me at least entire day to look through everything. They have a special shelf for items that has been somewhat damaged. And they are sold for a really cheap price and I found a tube of Daniel Smith raw umber for $5. I also got a trial set of a brand of Japanese watercolor paper called Watson. We went to a historical place that we had never been to before. We were shocked that even on a work day, this place is completely packed with people. And again, my plan of sketching in this place did not work out. It was almost comical to think about it when I was stuck in there. But we did get some really good Korean food and it was really delicious, just as I remembered it. I got sick for a few days for some reason, probably some kind of spring allergy thing. It's nothing serious, but my mom decided to take me to a Chinese medicine place to get some herbal remedies for me. It's soon time for me to fly home again. I was surprised at how great the food was on the airplane. It felt great to come back to Sweden where everything is so calm and quiet. That is one thing I desperately missed as an introverted person. The weather was so nice. It was still a little bit cold, but the sun was shining in the late afternoon. I was exhausted and jet-lagged, but the next day I was still super pumped to open up my packages to show you everything I bought. 
I got a tutorial book about oil pastels and watercolor journals. and a book about Japanese traditional colors and pigments. I also bought many books that are meant for students to prepare for their art school exams. I found them to be really detailed and helpful. I especially like how abstract and expressive these gouache still life paintings are. And I'm so glad that there are so many step-by-step -step explanations here. The last two books are for gouache portraits. I haven't read too much into them, but I'm sure I'll have many study sessions using these books. I bought some watercolor paper that I was running out and of course I had some Baohom paper as well and I also got a few packs of this no brand cotton paper they only cost like two dollars a pack and I also got a pack of Sounders hot press but I'm most excited about this Japanese paper brand called Watson I've heard so much good things about them Next, we have a few different palettes. I got this airtight palette. I think it's the same one as Emily Hughes. It doesn't take much space on the desk, which is great. And I'm gonna put my new gouache in here. I also ordered a clear transparent palette. I'm thinking to use this for blending oil pastels with a palette knife. It's a technique that I'm really excited to try. And I also got this tiny wavy porcelain palette for watercolor. Okay, moving on to brushes. I've seen people using fan brushes for gouache a lot lately and I really want to try it myself. And some small palette knives for painting with oil pastels and some blending stumps. And this is some kind of tool for blending and shaping oil pastels. I also got these gold hair watercolor mop brushes. They absorb so much water and I really like the shape of the handle. I tried some Chinese calligraphy brushes for watercolor and I think I'm getting the hang of it. And this is a very interesting pen. It has a brush tip but inside it is an ink converter for filling whichever ink you want. I bought a travel journal with a wool felt cover I mostly got it for the cover because I want to make my own sketchbook to put in here. And this pencil sharpener is for sharpening very long tip pencils. I was very skeptical about it at first but it seems to be legit. But honestly, I really have no idea how to sharpen pencil or how it's supposed to look like but um, I think it could work. And this is the most uh, unnecessary items I got. They're quite adorable, but yeah, it's really completely unnecessary. Next, we have my new dip pen collections. I think there's something fancy and tactile about them. Um, I don't know much about the pens or calligraphy, but I think it would be nice to give it a try. And of course, I also got a new ink and a dipping set. If you like to draw and paint with oil pastels, you know how messy it can get. 
Um, I always get stains all over my desk, so I was very happy to find a oil pastel cleaner. Now finally we have a bunch of new paints. I've never tried Japanese watercolor before and I heard a lot about Holbein and Kuratake. But during this trip I discovered two other brands, Kusakabe and Kisho. Kisho? I'm sorry about the pronunciation, but they are really really wonderful paints that really deserve their own video. I also got a small set of Holbein gouache. I haven't had much luck with gouache before and almost gave up so many times, but I'm still willing to give it another try. I couldn't help getting two sets of these soft oil pastels. I've seen people painting these with palette knives. It looks so satisfying and I just have to try it myself. I chose these two color sets mostly because I prefer the pale and muted colors since I already have my classic colors from Snellier sets. And I really can't wait to start playing with these. And last but not least, I got a table easel that can also be used as a planar box. It is very easy to set up and it's very lightweight. I think it's perfect for the summer months. I can put my palette, sponge and brushes in the drawer here and carry some water and snacks in the backpack while holding this box in my hand. I think it's gonna be really great. Alright, now I have a huge mess to clean up. I hope you enjoyed this video and do subscribe if you want to stay in touch and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye!